Could be. Let's go on to the Kabisi letter, my friend. BC letter. All right. So this data can get tricky, so I'm going to go slow. According to the Kabisi letter, uh, visa V X, the median new home price is now selling for $409,300, down 17.6% compared to last year. Okay. New home prices down 17.6% compared to last year. New homes. Median new home. Right. All right. Meanwhile, the median existing home is now selling for $391,800, up 3.4% compared to last year. Mm -hmm. So new homes down, existing homes up. Right. Okay. What does that mean? The gap between existing home prices and new home prices is set to close. This will be the first time since 2005 that existing homes sells for more than new homes. Wow. Think about that. That's weird. Yeah. That's very weird. And I think there's some interesting dynamics at play there. Okay. Because what naturally comes to mind for me is new home prices coming down are probably because they have to build homes that are more affordable. Well, I, I think part of it was the new homes were built for mostly high-end luxury. That was a lot of the, the – because builders can get more profit margin in those properties. Okay. So I think – those are having to mark prices down in that segment. Okay. I think existing homes are creeping up a little bit, but there was a period of time where new home sales were easier to get for people. They could put a down payment on it, they didn't have to bid. They got early acceptance. They just had to wait for the property a lot, lot longer. Yes. So I think that the, the levels and the rationale are starting to level out a little bit. But this article goes on to say that when old is worth more than new, you know something is broken. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting year for the housing market, especially since the Fed uh, may be cutting, cutting rates. So I'm very concerned about, okay, our expenses are moderating the level that they're increasing, but they're still up. Consumer debt, unprecedented levels. Auto debt, unprecedented levels. Non-household debt and aggregate, unprecedented levels. Student loan debt repayment kicking in in a full quarter by the time we hit 2024. And then I go, okay, um, what is going to be a catalyst? How is everyone going to survive this? And what is the home market's role in that? Mm -hmm. Commercial real estate we know is, frankly, well, not all commercial real estate, office in particular, is really, really in trouble. Yeah, and especially because of vacancy rates, right? I know that you know bringing people back to the office is a major point of contention for employers out there, but... It's getting. It's going to get to the point because the corporate debt levels are so high, and if companies didn't position themselves well enough to pay down their corporate debts, I mean, they may have to look at in order to stay alive to reduce some of their costs. And if you've already had layoffs, I mean, you have to look, take other measures, right? Maybe allowing people to stay home and cutting off some of those leases. Is this good for consumers that are interested in buying homes? Like we keep talking about how people are holding on, whether they're they have money saved, um, are they waiting for rates to come down or home prices to come down? Most consumers do not have money saved. Let's let's clear that up right now. They should be saving money, but they've spent that money. That's that spike up in spending behavior that I had you highlight earlier in the spending, and that's what that really meant mm -hmm. was holiday spending is indicative of a strained consumer. Yeah, it's still increasing, but it's increasing very nominally. Inflation's going down, but people are still spending significantly more than they were in just 2020. Right. So I think the the income strain, I think the savings is not there. I think this rush to buy is not going to be what they thought it was. Sure, a lot of equity in homes. 40% of the homes are owned like outright. It's, it's weird. It's a bizarre market. Yeah, and what you mean by that is they don't. 40% of the people out there who own homes don't have a mortgage on their homes. <clears throat> that is correct. Yes. Right. Um, I had some data here from Redfin as well. As of right now, 31% of the homes that are selling are still selling above list. Yeah. yeah. Right? Which is obviously not helping out the situation at all. Nope. Right? And that's not helping out inflation at all. Pre if you were to look at pre-pandemic levels, that number should be closer to 20%.